Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. Today, I'm gonna to be going over with you pros and cons of using beeswax foundation versus plastic inserts. And I got a bonus for you at the end that you've gotta use no matter what, so stick around. In beekeeping, when it comes down to foundation, which is the thing that we use in our frames, a lot of beekeepers are in two camps on this and some don't care. So I'm gonna say there's three camps. It's important to make a decision and choose which one you're gonna use based on some in-depth knowledge. And that's what I'm gonna give you today. Beeswax truly is the foundation of the hive, not just the foundation that we put in our frames, but the health of the beeswax is going to be the health of our colonies, the health of our queens, our workers, our drones, our brood, the quality of honey and the pollen, the royal jelly even. When our beeswax, our foundation is healthy, our bees are healthy. And this is gonna make a lot more sense as we get into it today. Let's start with the pros of using beeswax foundation in our frames. So first of all, beeswax foundation, it's a natural product. So that's a win right there. It's already something that the bees are familiar with. We're using it as a natural product. It makes us feel better as using a renewable resource, recycling it through our operation, knowing that our bees are getting a real substance. And in that regard, it's also too a natural bee attractant. When you put beeswax in a hive, it's not gonna be an unfamiliar odor to them. They know what that is and they know what to do with it. And especially so in our swarm traps. When we bait our swarm traps with old brood comb, uh, that beeswax is one of the primary things that will attract a swarm among other things, but it is a natural attractant to our bees. And a third thing, which is very important to each and every one of us is beeswax foundation is much more likely to be drawn out with comb much faster or more quickly than otherwise, especially if you put it on at the right time. No matter whether you're using plastic foundation or beeswax foundation, I have seen both used on bees where they refuse to draw wax out on those unless they're doing it at a time of year when multiple resources or abundant resources are coming in so that they can use those resources and be able to afford building out that comb. All right, so let's get into the cons, the things that we don't really wanna know, but we know we need to about using beeswax foundation. One, it's a bit of a higher cost for us beekeepers. Unless we make it ourselves, we get it from beekeeping supply manufacturers. And they get their beeswax from other beekeepers that melt down their beeswax and bring it into the store in blocks. And I've done this and the store will give me credit so I can use there at the store on other beekeeping supplies that I need that day. But that's where they get that. And then they've got to form it, dry it. You know, there's, it's a whole process. So it's a little bit higher cost and that may be worth it to you. Cost may not even be an issue. However, when it comes to putting that beeswax foundation into our frames, it's a lot more labor intensive. Whether you're getting wired frames, which require a special wedged top bar to keep in place, or if you're wiring non-wired beeswax foundation yourself and using a quick heat and melt method, either way, you're looking at a labor intensive task that's gonna take some time to prepare enough frames to fill a box and get ready for the beekeeping season. Now, don't get me wrong, I've done this personally and I appreciated it. The work was satisfying, the smell of the beeswax. I love working with beeswax. Some of my favorite aromas on this earth are propolis and melting beeswax. Oh, I just love it. Comment below if you do too. But either way you look at it, putting that beeswax foundation in our frames is a lot more labor intensive compared to plastic foundation, which leads to the third con of using beeswax foundation in, in our frames. That stuff's pretty fragile and it needs to be straight as much as possible until the bees can glue it in place and then draw it out. And even then it's still fragile during its first season. Let's say you're not using it as a brood frame, but you've got a box, a honey super full of foundation. Well, the first time you spin that out, unless you've got a good cage that keeps that in, that is likely to blow out the first season that you extract honey from a beeswax foundation frame. It's best to let that go through at least two seasons for the comb to kind of harden up to season, and that way it's less likely to blow out in the extractor 
when you're harvesting your honey. Now the fourth con is a little known thing by most beekeepers, but it is an issue. It's not something that I worry about so much, and that's this. Pesticides build up over time in beeswax. Yeah, I know that sucks. I'm in a very low pesticide use area myself. And I know that I've got pesticides in my beeswax just simply because my bees are within range of farmers. Uh, nothing big, no monocrop things going on here, but nevertheless, it does happen. And eventually I scrape down that wax and recycle it, melt it down. And if I go to a beekeeping supply store and trade that block of wax in for credit, they're gonna melt that down into wax foundation sheets. And eventually maybe you'll be the one buying those wax foundation sheets that have pesticides in them. Now, here's the thing I don't know. Can pesticides be neutralized through heating process? Is there something in the process of making beeswax foundation from old comb? Like, does it get rid of the pesticide issue? I don't know, but it's something to simply be aware of. And the last con that I came up with about using beeswax foundation was it's much more susceptible to wax moth. In fact, I have something for show and tell for you today. This frame here. As you can see, I still got some wires hanging. This used to be a wired sheet of beeswax foundation. This hive died and the wax moth took over more quickly than I could get around to and do anything about. Or maybe it happened in storage when the box was off of the hive. I don't know. But either way, you can see the residue. I haven't cleaned this up yet because I wanted you to see it. This is all cocoon of wax moth. It adheres to the wood. And um, there was a little bit of beeswax still hanging on these wires, but I went ahead and just cleaned it off and put it in my melter so I could go ahead and process that. But now, because wax foundation requires a wedged top bar, I can't just go and easily put another sheet of wired foundation in this because I've got to take up the wedge part of the top bar. I've got to take that off in order to put a new one in and then refasten that wedge piece that keeps the foundation in and hanging in the frame. If you've done this before, you know what I'm talking about. But as it is, I don't want to take the time and the labor to do that. So what I'm going to do with this frame, it's no good to me. I have very few of these in my operation anyways, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so let's move on to plastic inserts. Let's go over the pros first, and then we're going to get the cons as well. So the pros of a plastic insert as your foundation is, one, it's going to be a little more cost effective than beeswax foundation. That one's easy. Two, it's easy setup and easy handling. In other words, when I'm building frames, and I've got a frame fin I've got a whole box of frames finished and ready for inserts, all I have to do is pop this in the top bar, pop the bottom of the insert into place and it's done it's ready to go into my box and just within a few minutes i've got a box ready to put on bees during a honey flow ideally second is that it's less fragile than handling a beeswax foundation which i could easily bend or dent or tear and rip but this i mean i mean you can hear how sturdy it is it's plastic right and the third pro is an extension of that. It's not just durable to the touch for installation, but it's also more durable against wax moth and bear. So wax moth, believe it or not, this used to have drawn out wax on both sides of the frame. This was probably in one of those boxes that the wax moth demolished. They came along, ate whatever they do, all the wax, left their poop and web. I cleaned all that off, but at least my bees have a foundation from which to work. I don't have to worry about replacing any wax foundation because I've already got a base for them to work from. Now, when it comes to bear, I have cleaned up some yards of bees that did not have fences around them, electric fences. And believe it or not, this stuff can hold up pretty good to bear attack as well. Even if it gets holes in it from their teeth or their claws, I have seen these still usable after bear attack. That's something to keep in mind. Plus, it comes in two different colors for your color preferences. Now, when it comes to your preference, it really it, it really doesn't matter which color you get. I used to think that the queen's eggs would show up more easily and be able to see against a darker background, but I've had a really difficult time seeing eggs on certain days, especially when, on a cloudy day, on these just as much as these. So 
it really doesn't matter. And the last pro that I've got for using plastic inserts over beeswax foundation is that their quality is consistent. I've never had a batch of these that I bought and thought, oh man, that's, that's weak, it's not gonna make it. Now granted, when you store the stuff, it needs to be stored out of the sun. It is plastic. And over time, the sun's UV rays deteriorate plastic, it becomes brittle, and it breaks. But one of the plus things about using plastic, even though it's not a naturally occurring substance or material, especially from the hive, is that it is BPA free. So that eases my mind a little bit, knowing that I'm not gonna have whatever BPA is in my hive and potentially in my honey, products of the hive, so I'm not spreading that around. So in that regard, it's environmentally friendly, but moving on to the cons, eventually this is going to be trash, in which case it is no longer environmentally friendly. And again, like another con I mentioned already, it's not a naturally occurring material. And there is the potential of bees hesitating drawing wax out on these. But to be honest with you, I've only had that problem when I put it on at the wrong time of year. Bees will happily and gladly draw out beeswax foundation or plastic foundation when you put it on during a time of the year when resources are plentiful. And that's gonna be during a honey flow. Now, here's that bonus I promised you at the beginning of the video. There's one exception to this. Now, what I have right here is an unwired beeswax foundation, and this is not meant to be used in the brood nest. It's not for brood comb. As you can see, it's, it's much more narrow compared to a deep frame. And it's even more narrow than a medium honey super. This is specifically made for producing comb honey. And that is the one exception that you may consider if you decide that you wanna make comb honey, you've got to start with this. Do not use wired foundation because you do not want wires in your customer's comb. You don't even want it in your own comb at home. And what makes this comb foundation is that it's even thinner than unwired beeswax foundation for brood combs. Because comb foundation is meant to eat and take a bite out of the whole thing. So less wax means less wax in your mouth and more honey, more of the, the experience that we all like, those of us who enjoy chewing on a nice piece of honeycomb. So let me know what your preference is in the comments below. I'll be excited to hear whether you're a plastic beekeeper or if you love the old natural way. And let me know if you produce comb honey too. I've done that, it's a lot of fun, and there's definitely a market for it in my opinion. So drop me one of these, tell your friends about the Hive Doctor, and I'll see you in the next video.